Glory to God. Well, I want to welcome everyone to another one of our Bible studies, a lesson on manifesting success, manifesting the success that we have in Christ Jesus, not success we're trying to get. I think that's so important for us to remember, to be rooted and grounded in the Word, that we are successful. We're not trying to get successful. We are successful if, can you guys say if? Yeah. If we have salvation in Christ Jesus. We are successful. We're not failures in life. We are the successful. A person with money without Christ is not successful. A person with fame without Christ is not successful. What we're talking about has eternal implementation. How do you say that? Implications. Eternal. To be eternally saved or to be eternally lost. Could you say someone was successful if they were eternally lost? No. <laughs> no. What if they were rich and they were eternally lost? Or what if everyone knew their name? And they might write songs about people. Everyone knows your name. <laughs> I think that was on Cheers, where everyone knows your name. <laughs> and to be eternally lost. That's terrible. But we have taken care of that in Christ Jesus, just by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. You know, if a person was a gambling person, and you could bet everything against nothing, wouldn't it be a, a poor bet? If you win, you get everything, and if you lose, you get nothing. That would be a good bet. But what if you lose everything, and if you win the bet, you get nothing? That's a poor bet, isn't it? You put up everything you have against someone else putting up nothing. Could that be a wise bet? Well, if you talk to the people that don't believe in salvation in Christ Jesus, they say, oh, there's nothing after death. That's what they believe. And their hope? Yeah, there's nothing after death. So I say, well, I believe that there's everything after death. What if they bet me? and they win, that there's nothing after death. What did they lose? Death. Nothing. Why? Because there's nothing after death. But what if I'm right? And there is something after death. And they bet against it. They lost a chance to have everything. So why wouldn't you take that? Why wouldn't you say, I'm going with the one that says, I get everything. Because I like to be in control. Yeah, I get everything. Because that's probably why I like to be in control. I want to be the boss. Well, the boss over eternal death. Oh, what a sad lot. Mm-hmm. But anyway, let's go on, because that's not us. We have received Jesus as Lord. We are successful. We have everything. And I'm not just talking off the top of my head. If you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it says all things are ours, doesn't it? Life, death, the universe. The present in the future. I think since I went there, we're going to have to go there and read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I don't want anyone to think I'm just sitting up here saying stuff. <coughs> we're talking about 
We'll start reading in verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, brethren, we'll start reading in verse 20. I'm going to read this in the Amplified Bible. And verse 20 says, And again the Lord knows the thoughts and reasonings of the humanly wise and recognize how futile they are. That's what we were just talking about. These people that think themselves so wise that they don't need Jesus, that there's nothing after, and they'll philosophize about it. Some of them will even use the scriptures to try to justify their point that they don't believe in the scriptures. I'll tell you, even the scripture says it's no different than a dog. When you die, you're just buried. Because there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that says something to that effect. So they picture themselves to be wise, so wise that they know the Bible better than you, the children of God. And they start trying to reason with you about how the Bible is not true and using the Bible as their justification. I mean, how ignorant, how ignorant is that? But it goes on to say in verse 21, So let no one proudly exalt concerning men, boasting of having this or that man as a leader, for all things are yours. How many things? All. all things. He said, well, that's talking about some spiritual stuff, and you, you know, you have peace, and you have joy, and you have love, and here go it, and that, that human reasoning. And God makes it so plain in verse 22. It says, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, Peter, or the universe, or the what? The universe. Is the universe physical? Hmm? We're not talking about emotions. We're not talking about flu-flu stuff that doesn't, you can't touch. We're talking about the universe, the stars, the planets, the earth, the moon, the water, the trees, the land. All things are yours. Let me read this again. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the universe or life or death or the immediate and threatening present or the subsequent and uncertain future, all are yours. Right now is ours because we're in Christ Jesus and the future is ours. If the future is ours, this word indicates there is a future. Doesn't it? Else we couldn't own it. The future is ours. Why? Because we're going to live eternally. All things are ours. So we have everything that the person that would bet against us is subject to lose. If they're right, what do we lose? Nothing. Why? Because if they're, if they're right, there is nothing. But if we're right, what do they lose? Everything, all things. Say, man, don't ever go, you tell those people, don't ever go to Vegas and gamble. You're not using very much wisdom in your gambling. If you're gonna roll the dice and bet everything against nothing, how crazy would that be? Well, here I'm going to put up my house, my car, all of my possessions, my family, my future life. I'm going to put up everything. And what are you going to get if you win? Nothing. Why would anyone make a bet like that? That's the opposite of wisdom. And that's what we're going to talk about for a while today is wisdom. Just using wisdom. Yes, I haven't forgot your question. Go ahead. A while back. A while back? Yeah, I uh, met a couple of people that always went to Vegas. You met some people that always went to Vegas? They would, uh, lose hundreds of dollars each time, and they were happy. They would lose hundreds of dollars each time, and they were happy. They were ordinary people. <laughs> Yeah, this, this, if you talk to people that gamble like that, and you listen to the words, the words before they ever go are unwise. Now, see if you can finish this for me. When I go to Vegas, I always take 
$500 that I can. Why are you going there with money to lose? I mean, the whole thinking is wrong. They see, this is this, this, this thinking that we're talking about is just the opposite of wisdom. We're not to operate in that kind of thinking. That's it. Ephesians 5, 13, 5, 15. Yeah. Well, 515 is really Ephesians 515. It's, this is a command. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So this is a commandment for us to walk in wisdom, to make wise decisions, to do wise things. And the interesting part, and this was, uh, I started to call his pastor, Minister Brandy, gave me this book Sunday. I finished it last night. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just so compelling. I'm going to order 20 of these. We need this kind of wisdom and thinking in the church. You know, since we've been together, the Lord has shown me and, and pointed out to me some of the tactics of Satan, that we're not to be ignorant of his tactics and his devices. And it's part of the ministry the Lord has given me. It's nothing I have inherent. It's just when things pop out that this is one of Satan's tactics, the Holy Spirit has made me really aware of these things. And one of the things that he has used and used throughout the ages is religion. And so I've been acutely aware of what's happening in religion. I mean, it just rings in my ears. I can't help commenting when I hear it. That's religion. And too many call Christianity one of the great religions of the world. Anyone heard that term? That Christi Christianity is one of the major religions or the great religions of the world? You guys have heard it? Yeah, that is so far from the truth. Christianity is not a religion at all. To where members of the church, believers will start repeating these things that they hear in the world. Well, we have one of the greatest religions in the world. No, we don't have a religion. We're not a member of any religion. We're not a member of, of the great religions of the world. We have a relationship. God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth, is our heavenly father. He has adopted us into his family. He has translated us into his kingdom, into his government, under his governmentship. When we're born again, we're not born into his family. We are born into citizenship in the kingdom of God. We're adopted into his family and made to be children. Adoption is special. Birth can come accidentally. You think there are any accidental births? We're not an accident. He chose us in Christ Jesus before the foundations of the world. So we have a relationship, not religion. And because of this false thinking and false teaching about us being a religion, a lot of things have come into our lives, the lives of believers, that we have to undo, change our thinking about before we can start to walk in wisdom the way we have been commanded to walk to walk circumspectly. I like to use that word circum it, it, in, in relating to something that is circular. In every area of our lives, he wants us to walk in wisdom, to make wise decisions, wise choices. Well, it's not only through religion that Satan gets us to use this 
erroneous thinking, this poor thinking, this decision-making process. We learn from the world. Who, who is the prince of the powers of air of this world? Satan is. And this comes through the airways. It comes into our ears. It comes through, through schools and churches and politicians and from each other. How we make our decisions. If you're going to walk in wisdom and walk wisely, you need to make what? Wise decisions. But our decision making that we process, that we learn as children coming up in the world, doesn't come from God's perspective. It comes from the perspective of the world. So when we start going into the decision making process as we get older and as we become adults, we use a false premise that we learned as children to make our decisions. And if we don't learn, what this book, this is a book that's called Ask It by Andy Stanley. I want everyone that can get it, buy it, read it, mark it up. Uh, I'm going, I already know I'm going to buy a minimum of 20 of these just to give out. This is so important because this is what it identifies. The fact that when we make decisions based on what we learn in the world, this is kind of the decision-making process, not of the church, not of the body of Christ, not supposed to be what we are, we're commanded to walk high, to walk high, circumspectly, acting in wisdom. But this is what happens. We have a decision to make. And what we learn in the world is something like this. Uh, how much can I do without crossing the line? Uh, how much of this can I eat without getting diabetes? How much of this can I pilfer without getting caught or going to jail? How close can I get to the edge of destruction, annihilation? How close can I get? Can I cross the line? How far over the line can I cross? If I'm driving, and the speed limit is 35, how, how far past that limit can I go without the police stopping me? See, our thinking is not based on, this comes from, this is just natural thinking. To us, it's just natural. You know, if they says 35, you can do 45 and get away with it. Right? If you're only supposed to eat so much of this, you can eat just, you know, one more piece of cheesecake. It might, you know, it's going to make you feel queasy for a minute, but it's so good, it's not going to do anything really. How, how far can I go? How much can I get away with? Can you guys think back with me as children when this kind of thinking started? How much can I do without getting a whipping? You know, how many cookies can I take before someone will notice that I've been stealing cookies out the cookie jar? If I get caught, who can I blame? How much can, this is not doing what God has commanded us to do, to walk in wisdom.